Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice Print Roleplay. Alright, so when you buy a printer, you should know that the company you buy it from is just as important as the features of the printer itself. The, you know, the model, the, the quality, the resolution, whatever it is you're, you're, you're looking at and you're getting excited about with that printer, the company and what that company does for you and whether or not they're going to stand behind their printer, whether or not they're going to give you good support, is just as important as what this printer itself can do. So, to that end, one of the first things I like the most about the SE10 has nothing to do with the printer itself and everything to do with LotMax. They are doing an amazing job with coming up with really succinct educational videos. They are coming up with awesome materials for you to be able to jump online, have a question, without even having to wait for a response. You can jump on their YouTube page, which of course will be linked down below, and you can find answers to a bunch of really great questions that people are going to run into pretty, pretty early on in the printing process. And having that information right there in front of you is awesome. So that's something I really, really appreciate, first of all. Furthermore, what I really appreciate about this specific printer is just how much they have put into, how much effort and time they put into making it a really great option for not only people who have been printing for a while, because it is a really, really reliable, really strong printer, but also making it really accessible for new printers. So people just getting into the hobby, this is a great option for them. And that's really difficult to do, to make it accessible for people that are just getting in the hobby and also make it strong enough and reliable enough and robust enough with its features to make it something that people who have been printing for a while want to get and use. And it meets that requirement really well. Like I said, LotMax themselves are setting themselves up to be a great company to be able to work with people just getting into this this hobby and be able to give them an awesome device to be able to, to get into this hobby without as much frustration as you might find with some other units. So one of the things that I really like about this, you know, to that end is that the assembly on this is 90% done. So basically all you have to do is a top, attach the, uh, the top gentry here to the bottom of the unit. That's it. It's four bolts. You're done. You connect, I think, five wires and that's it. You're ready to print. You know, it's, it's super easy. It's super quick. There's so little involved. The manual is really specific and really clear on what you should do. So there isn't a whole lot of that confusion about, you know, pictures not being clear or whatever. It's all there. It's easy. And this thing is ready to print in you know, five minutes. And that's not an exaggeration, seriously. Again, there, there'll be unboxing videos and things down there. I consider doing those kinds of videos, but after seeing what LotMax has done, there's no point. It, 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 you know, I'm just going to be doing exactly what they did. So I'm just going to be posting down below. Like I said, links to that kind of stuff. If you guys want to see an unboxing video, if you want to see a, 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 an assembly video, just check out their stuff because I'm not going to spend my time doing it when they've already done it and they've done it really well. So there's no point. I didn't mean to come off as sounding bitter there. I kind of did, though. I was like, there's no point. There's no point. They've already done it. But I, I meant that to be a positive thing. Like, there's no point because they did it really well, and I would just be retreading something. So anyway, it'll be down below, it, down in the description below if you guys want to see it. It's down there. It's awesome. If you need it, check it out. So one other thing to mention is the build plate on the SE10 is actually a little bit bigger than what you would expect from like an Ender 3. Now, it's not big enough that it's going to make a huge difference, but I will admit there have been a couple of times where I've gone to print things on an Ender 3 and it's been so close. It's been within a couple of millimeters, but I can't get it because I just can't finagle it the right way. And that is with using the entire build plate of the, uh, the Ender 3. So the uh, SE10 does give you a little bit extra. I think it's about 15 millimeters bigger. Uh, it might be more like 20 actually, so don't quote me on that. But it is a bit bigger, um, big enough that it does it will make a difference in some situations. Um, so it gives you a little bit extra height and it gives you a little bit extra width. So that is definitely nice not to be overlooked. Um, uh, you know, it's probably one of the biggest build plate printers you can get with this resolution for under $300. So again, that's a pretty good tick in their favor in my opinion. So, all right, I've gushed about this printer for a little bit. You're going to think that I'm going to give this thing an outstanding review. It's going to be 10 out of 10, but no. Actually, there are a couple of things about this printer that do bring it down a little bit, and uh, mainly it's going to be this uh, this runout sensor. So it's a really great idea, and I love having a, like a runout sensor on this. I've never really used them. I don't necessarily think that the way that I print is um, it's really conducive to needing them. But there are some people out there that really like having that extra sense of security. However, this the way that this runout sensor is designed. Unfortunately, it just it doesn't really work because the way the filament path runs into the printer, this actually ends up getting ground out by the filament. So there's a hole on both sides, and the way that it works is there's basically a small arm inside here. And when that arm is pressed forward, it knows that there's filament in there. And as soon as the filament runs through the other side, that arm clicks forward into the next position, and it tells the printer it's out of filament. So 
it's a, a really straightforward sense system. It does work. I've tested it. And the main issue that I was having was I was getting some filament drag because since this is plastic, it's just a plastic tube. It's a plastic hole on both sides. There's, there's no like collar on this, like a, you know, a metal, metal washer or something like that to try to ease the, uh, the filament from going in because the filament is abrasive. So it was actually starting to wear a hole in this. And as this was moving forward to print and then retracting back, I could hear it squeaking. Um, which is definitely not a good sign. You don't want to hear your filament squeaking on anything because if your filament is getting bound up on something, that causes you to have some under extrusion. So definitely, I think that this could use a redesign. I'm going to try to work on it a little bit in the next few weeks here. But that is one thing about this that I wasn't super pleased with is that this runout sensor could use another, you know, another iteration of, of design, in my opinion. So beyond the runout sensor, there are two other issues that I have with this printer and. They're minor considering every other printer of this type and this configuration has them. So I can't give Lotmax too hard a time, but like I said, it's something I would like to see change. First of all, the bed on these is something that I definitely recommend switching out pretty quickly after getting it. I would get a glass bed. Um, I think that the bed on this that comes stock with it works fine. It does a fine job, but the adhesion can be a little too strong. And I know you want to have good bed adhesion. You want your prints to, to stay in place while they're printing, but when they're done after I let this cool, I can pry on this thing so hard I'm worried about gouging the bed. If I slip off, I might cut my finger. It's actually kind of ends up being almost a safety issue when you think about how tight these prints are and how hard you have to wrench on this. And then you're going to end up getting your bed out of level because you're wrenching on it so hard. So I would really like to see, you know, glass beds more often on these kinds of printers. But like I said, for a printer that's well under $300, I'm not going to give them too hard a time for shipping the same bed that all other printers have. But it is something I want to mention. The other issue that I would like to see addressed with these printers pretty quickly in the future is they don't really come with any kind of filament guides here. Now, one thing Lotmax has done, which I appreciate, is that uh, they do have a filament guide that you can download and that they explain how to print and how to install on their, like I said, their YouTube video. So that's something I will definitely give them credit for. They are trying to, to work around that issue, um, but it doesn't really ship with any kind of filament guide. So if you don't know, then definitely take it from me. Filament guide is one of the first things you want to print. I have my own here and I will be explaining about, you know, the, the different types of upgrades that I recommend both purchased and printed in a later video. But for now, one of the first things you want to print is at least one, possibly even two different types of filament guides. This one on here, I was mainly just doing to test out. I don't really like it. I actually have a different one that I like to use, but like I said, we'll discuss that in a different video. For now, a filament guide is one of the first things you want to print because you want to have a good smooth path from the filament on top down into the extruder. So that's one other issue that I see with this, but like I said, it's on all these types of printers, so I'm not going to give them too hard a time, but I wanted to mention it. All right, so moving right along, the touchscreen on this is awesome. It's clean, it's bright, it's easy to use, it's plenty big enough for me to be able to see what I need, so I really like using it. It's It gives this whole thing just a clean feel, and it's not just the touchscreen either. It's actually this framework that all the electronics sit in. So you have your board, your power supply, it's all down here in this really slick self-contained unit in the bottom. So you don't have the power supply sitting on the side here, causing more wires to stream down. It's all just kind of streamlined and clean. And I really like that. And some people don't really care about the aesthetics of their printer and that's fine. As long as it works, it works. But in this situation, I really like that it's a clean looking design. I really appreciate that a lot. You of course also have your SD card slot here in the front where it's easily accessible. You do also have a port down here for things like flashing the board or stuff like that when they release firmware updates in the future, you will have easy access to be able to um, uh, get to that here at the front. Now that's not too much different than other printers, but it's nice to have. All right, so the last two things I wanna talk about are maybe the coolest things about this printer. You guys can be the judge of that. First of all, it comes with a metal extruder. Now. I know for a fact that Lotmax has recently taken customer feedback to heart and they have started shipping these with a metal extruder instead of the plastic one. So that just goes to show again, like this is a great company that really wants to be customer facing. They want to take that feedback from their customers and they want to improve. So the metal extruder is an awesome upgrade. That's one less thing you have to worry about doing because that is one of the upgrades that pretty much everyone agrees is one of the first things you want to do. So you don't have to worry about the metal extruder. It's taken care of for you. That's awesome. All right, last but not least, the SE10 comes with a silent board installed. Now, that is a really cool upgrade. There are other printers out there that have that silent board upgrade available, but it is something that you have to do the work yourself, and it's usually like a $50 purchase. So the fact that this comes with that installed, if that's something you're interested in, it is really cool. So let's take a look at some of the prints I got off this, and then I'll give you guys my final thoughts. So here's some of the models I printed off this SE10. 
Now, obviously we started with the test dog because you should always start with that, especially after you first assemble your printer. It turned out great, it's really smooth, it doesn't have any major issues at all. I was really happy with it. Even the filament that they send, honestly, is, is pretty good stuff and they do send a good amount of it, which I really appreciated because if you order your filament at the same time you order your printer and for whatever reason there's a mix up, it doesn't get there, then you don't have to be so frustrated waiting around for your filament to get here before you can use your awesome new printer. So they give you plenty to play around with. So next up we have this tolerance gauge. Now what this is, is basically six models. So it prints this square block on the bottom, then it prints the five pillars inside of it. So it all prints at the same time, but they are actually six models because they are six different objects. So the idea here is that each one of those pillars is gonna print inside the square block with enough distance or enough gap there that when you go to lift this up, the block should pick up over top the cylinders and have them fall through. So you can see we start at 0.2 and get up to 0.6. One thing that I really appreciated about this printer was that when I went to take this off, they did exactly what they were supposed to. So each one of those has a perfect tolerance and they popped right out with no issue. That's great. That's awesome. So especially when we're talking about doing small things like minis, to know that you can print from 0.2 to 0.6 with no issues like that is great. So next up is this torture test off Thingiverse. Now I picked this one because it has a little bit of everything. And as you can see, pretty much everything on here printed great. Um, the only issue is with the stringing and that's most likely gonna be a retraction issue and I'll play around with the settings a little bit in the future to try to resolve that. But even still, this printed great. So we have two overhang values here. We have 75 and 80, both printed without supports really, really well. Now, obviously, as you'd expect, the backsides are a little rough. But seriously, like without supports to print up to 80 degree overhang is really good. So I'm definitely impressed there. Absolutely a pass. And then of course we have this awesome supportless model from Vivictus Miniatures. You'll recognize this as the barkeeper mini that I used in the Kira tutorial that I did a little while back. So yeah, this printed again, it's amazing with this awesome level of detail. And seriously, like I'm just blown away. Like look at that. There's some really great detail there on pretty much every part of this model, but seriously, that mustache, I mean, come on. But yeah, so, awesome prints. All right, as promised, here's an example of the SE10 sounds like running. Yeah, I promise, there's no audio editing going on here, that's just the sound of the printer, or lack thereof. So this is the main screen here. I'm going to printing and you can see all the different options you have for folders or models that you have set on your SD card. You can go back to the main screen here. Everything is clean, it's easy to use, it's easy to read. The touchscreen is really responsive. And like I said, everything just makes sense. Leveling is done with a couple of quick touches on the screen. You know, you can check your um, different values depending on what you want to do for preheating your nozzle for moving filament or any of those kinds of things. Like it's just well set up and easy to use. All right, my final thoughts. It's an awesome printer. Absolutely, nine out of 10, I recommend it. It's great. It has a really great printing experience. So Lotmax is a relatively new company, but they are definitely working to build up that goodwill with their customers, and it shows. They've got that, you know, the, the silent board, the metal extruder, the touch screen, the great quality, the sleek design. Like, it, it's all just a really well-rounded, really positive printing experience. And I really, really enjoyed using this printer. The Filament sensor is a frustration for sure, and I definitely hope that they redesign it so that it's more useful and less frustrating in the future, but for now, at least it's not that hard to remove. Take the two screws off the top and pop the cable off the side, and you can just remove it off the printer. No issues, it won't cause any difficulties with the printer printing, it won't think that there's no filament or anything, it just doesn't read that sensor anymore at all, so it just prints fine. So at least it's an easy fix. All right, hopefully you guys found that review helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more. I definitely have a ton of videos planned that I'm pretty excited about and I think will be really helpful for both new printers and veteran printers alike. So yeah, if you're looking for where you can find this lot max, check out in the description down below. If you wanna see some of the stuff that I've been producing with this or some of the stuff that other people are working on, definitely jump on that Facebook page. It's an awesome community of printers and it's a good place to just post what you're working on or you know ask questions and get some help if you're running into issues and just be part of a really great community. All right, till next time.